Paltrowcast. Sam, Caitlin, I am Darren Paltrowitz with The Hype Magazine. A pleasure to be speaking with both of you. Uh, unison answer here, I'm sure, but how's your day going? Sam, you go first. <laughs> it, it's, it's going extremely well. It's a beautiful semi-humid day here in New York. So uh, yeah, I'd say that's, that's reason to celebrate, right? Amen to that. Well, I'm going to ask you the same question, but to Caitlin first, had you been to Long Island before filming the show? No, I had no business in Long Island before Bridge and Tunnel, surprisingly. Um, but yeah, now I'm, I'm pretty familiar with at least three major uh, attractions there. Lynbrook, Rockville Center, that area? Yeah. Okay. And a bunch of the malls between the two. <laughs> uh, Sam, little different for you grew up in Queens a lot of people from Queens seem to have a love-hate thing with Long Island where either they were there every weekend or they go no I don't I've never heard of it uh in your case which was it for you for Long Island in your upbringing I uh was the former I I was yeah my 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 dad made sure we were out on Long Island every weekend uh especially out on the North Fork he just wanted to like get out of Queens get out of Astoria um, he, he was a mechanic. So he was like, just get me out of the shop, get me out of the fumes. So I, yeah, I grew up pretty familiar with, with Long Island and now like my siblings live out there. So, so I'm out there pretty often. <laughs> uh, Caitlin, you mentioned becoming familiar with the malls. I mean, this is not an endorsement per se, but, uh, was it Roosevelt Field Mall was your primary destination? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, to be honest, I couldn't tell you for sure. I wasn't sure where I was 90% of the time. Um, but I, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's wonderful as somebody from Long Island to be seeing the show portrayed in such a an honest way. Because growing up on Long Island, you tend to have a love-hate thing until you leave it and then you kind of realize you love it and you miss it. Uh, <laughs> Sam... For you, how much work is needed for this character? Oof. Um, I guess the 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 Long Island part was was tricky. You know, it was I was a, I'm I'm a city boy, born and raised. So it was it was interesting seeing like the suburban life of Long Island and living that and like riding your bike in the street, not worried about getting hit by a car. Uh, so there was that. There was that. <laughs> that was kind of the hard part of it. And, and there's also like a different dialect out in Long Island. Um, and Long Island, as you know, is uh, one word. Uh, Long Island. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was, it was, it was tricky, you know, kind of getting out of that Brooklyn Queens vibe and, and getting into the Long Island vibe. And I, I guess only real New Yorkers could really tell a difference. Everything just sounds like New York to everybody else, but um, yeah, trying to, trying to, trying to portray that authentic Long Island was the hard part everything else the family the, the the passion the photography everything that was that that came easy uh, same question at you Caitlin uh obviously it's a character and then you also have to go well 1980s was I really around then as a as a developed human being not really how much work goes into this for you versus just knowing how to do it naturally um you know it's funny, like it's it's an accent that like I think I was born to do. Like I actually think I I I deserve to do it. Um, but it, it's one of the, it's one of the few things I've ever done that actually just like I you you know like one day you wake up and you're like oh I think I want to try eating olives and your whole life you're like Ugh. and then you have one you're like actually this is great I'm gonna do this. That's kind of how this accent was for me. Like I just decided like. I'm gonna try this because I worked with um, Ed Burns on a movie called Summertime in like one million years ago, and mm -hmm. when I was 27, and um, it was yeah, it was kind of just like a switch that went off. I think because like Australians are such like active shit talkers, and like there's no there's no real affectation. I mean, I, I have a lot because I'm an actor and I've got a fake British accent, but like I think that. Um, yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't that hard. It was it, it, I was intimidated at the prospect of doing it again. The older you get, the more gun shy you get. But yeah, Jill Jill feels pretty familiar to me. Like I feel like all the girls that I 
so like all the girls that I'm really close to have that same kind of energy and I think I have that energy a bit as well um what was the question was that did I answer <laughs> some some people when they have a role they say only call me only call me Jill for the next two months and I will not do anything that Jill would never do and then other people go yeah I'll read it once or twice I I think I can figure this out so I was curious if this one took a lot of work for you to play this role. I mean, luckily, Jill and I want to do a lot of the same things. Um, but yeah, I, I, I didn't make everyone call me Jill, but I did for the first season speak exclusively in the accent, which, which was really hard for me because I felt like a real wanker, you know? Um, it was, I was just so intimidated by yeah. fucking it up that I think, um, I think honestly it lent itself to sounding better because I didn't, I mean, I don't know. It, I, I think that, um, you know, to each their own, but method acting feels, feels exhausting. I don't know how anybody can take themselves seriously enough to do it, but, but whatever gets you there. And after having done this accent for like well over a month in yeah. my own personal life, I do get it, but it's very hard to like take yourself seriously when you're doing it. Especially when you need to call your mum, who's Australian and they're like, well, why are you talking like that? <laughs> Well, my last question for both of you, and I'll go to Sam first, is obviously Bridge and Tunnel is the best show on, on Epics. Everyone knows that. What's the second best show on, on Epics? Ooh, I really got, and this was even before Bridge and Tunnel, I, I really fell in love with Godfather of Harlem. Um, with, yeah, that's that's a really, really good show. And then, uh, <laughs> funny enough, I auditioned for uh, Billy the Kid, but I have yet to watch it. But that looks like a really good show, too. Um, so yeah, hell yeah. Godfather of Harlem, check it out. Very good show. Caitlin, before I get the boot here, your second favorite show on Epics besides Bridge and Tunnel. Oh, well, my first favorite season one of Bridge and Tunnel, <laughs> second best season two of Bridge and Tunnel. <laughs> I see what you did there. Well, either way, well done, both of you. Looking forward to whatever is next, whether it's season three, four, five, and six, or whatever it is. Keep up all the greatness. Watch your fingers. Watch it. Thanks so much. Outro cast. <laughs>